Genesis chapter 2 is where we will begin this morning. I'm going to start reading in verse 18. The Bible reads in Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Let's pray. Dearly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for many blessings to us, Lord, and for your word and for the many things we can learn from it. Lord, I pray that you will help me to get out of the way and that your words will come through clearly and easily understood this morning. Lord, I pray if there be anyone here that's not saved, that they will come to know you this, uh, this morning, calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Lord, now I pray that you'll bless our time together with the reading and the study of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As I was doing my traveling, I did a lot of, uh, you know, just looking at different articles and things online. And what I discovered was that this month, March, is uh, some sort of like Women's History Month or something like that. Some of you may, may know about that. Uh, and so this morning's sermon is kind of entitled, uh, The War Against Women. The War Against Women. Because uh, being a woman in 2023, uh, you are in a battle. You're in a struggle. Uh, it is difficult. And I want to kind of tell you why we're in a position that we are in uh, with this battle this morning. Now, we see here in Genesis chapter 2 that God made man and said, It is not good for man to be alone. So I will make him a helpmeet, and he made woman as a helpmeet for man. And according to this, we see here in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse you know, 24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So we can see that God's design is for men and women to be married to each other and to live as one. You know, a man should leave his father and mother who should be living together. This is an ideal world, you see. And, and in 2023, we do not have an ideal world. So in an ideal world, a, a man should leave his family, which consists of a father and a mother. He should marry someone and start a new family. This is God's design. Okay, now let's continue with this story and look at why there is a war against women today and look at the battle. Let's continue with Genesis chapter three, because this is where it starts. Genesis chapter three, verse one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So we see that the serpent approaches the woman and tries to get her to sin. Verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise... 
She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. You see, we men have been blaming our wives for everything since the first marriage. Okay? We've been blaming you for everything. That's what Adam did. Okay? Then we go to verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Now notice this. This is what I want us to look at here. This is where we have the war on women. This is why we can understand why this world seems to hate women so much and seems to really just try to, to, to wear them down. And I'm going to explain this here in just a little bit. Verse 14, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And then notice verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. Notice that God says, I am going to put enmity between you, the serpent, and woman. What is enmity? It is hate. It is anger. It is strife. So as part of the curse, God puts anger between the serpent and the woman. And the serpent, we know, is the devil. And I'm going to show you that here in just, just a couple minutes. So God says, because of this, I'm going to put enmity between you, the devil, and the woman. And between the woman's seed and the devil's seed. Okay, now who are the devil's seed? The Bible calls the devil's seed the sons of Belial. And if you, you know, we're not going to look here for sake of time this morning because I want to do a little more reading. But in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 12... The Bible tells us that Eli's children, who were past priests you know, at that time, but they were very wicked and evil. They rejected God. They were sons of Belial because they knew not the Lord. And they were like reprobates today. People who just, they, they have heard. Because, you know, Eli's sons, they clearly knew about God. They were pastors after all. They were priests. People who have heard the word of God who just completely and totally reject it, who do not find it to be credible at all, those are the sons of Belial. And we see them in the Bible. I've preached sermons on the sons of Belial before, and I have tied the sons of Belial to primarily three groups of people. Politicians, most politicians are the sons of Belial. They completely reject the Bible. They completely reject anything about God. They are the children of the devil, and Jesus calls them that. Then we have the news media. The news media, or, you know, as an example, Jezebel gets the news media to bring false accusations against Naboth when she wants Ahab to have his vineyard. And they're called the sons of Belial in that case. So the news media, primarily, for the most part, they reject everything about the Bible. They are very anti-Christian. They are the sons of the devil. Okay? And then the uh, educational institutions in this nation. 
you know, with, who have a lot of university professors. They are the most anti-God that you will see. They are also the sons of Belial. So the war is going to happen between the devil and his seed and the woman and her seed. And it is no coincidence that the most anti-women people in our world today are politicians, are the news media, and are university professors and leaders. Those are the most anti-women people today. I'll show you why here in just, just a little bit. So there is, has, since time has begun, the devil has hated women because it is a woman that caused him to be cursed. Also, I'm going to come uh, back to the Old Testament here in just a little bit, but if you want to go, you can go with me to the book of Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. So we looked at how the devil hates women as a result of the curse in Genesis chapter 3. Now, if we look at Revelation chapter 12, we'll see at the end of the Bible how the devil also hates women. It's in both places. So Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible reads in Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. Notice this in verse 9, that old serpent, okay, so the old serpent, referencing back to Genesis, called the devil and Satan. So it is very clear that the serpent in Genesis is the devil and Satan, and that the dragon here is the devil and Satan which deceived the whole world, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death, Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, and of the seal, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man-child. So we can see the devil again, battling against woman, because it is woman that brought forth Jesus Christ, you know, because it was Mary that had the baby. You know, this is going to come up again later in my sermon, so just so you understand. And it is bizarre to me that here we are in 2023, and I am going to have to say this. Men cannot be pregnant. Okay? This is a, something that women can do. Okay? Just so we know, because... We're, we live in a world where people are trying to confuse all this. And the reason they are trying to do it is because the devil is behind this war on women. So Mary is the one that brought forth Jesus. Now, is the devil able to wage war against the person Mary right now? No, he cannot because she is in heaven. So he will wage war against Women, because they are basically, you know, Mary is representative of women. 
So how is he waging war against women? Well, this is where my thoughts on Women's Day kinds of show, kind of show up, you know, and, and how the world, the politicians, the news media, and, you know, university, you know, all these people in the name of science are waging war today against women. I've got three passages that I'm going to bring up, three points that show what the Bible says about women and will show you how anti that is when it comes to our world today. Now, the first place that I want to go is one verse in Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22, one verse, verse 5 says this very clearly. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Is there a clearer verse in the Bible against this whole transgenderism nonsense. There is not. And let me tell you, if you look at the news today, at what the news media will report, you cannot go on your phone and look at a news site today almost without seeing a picture of a woman in a dress, a man in a dress, I'm sorry, a man in a dress. And that very same news media Seeming with a straight face to say, oh, we got to follow the science, calling that man a her in the article. It is all disgusting. There, I, let me tell you something. There is no man here that I would like to see in a dress. It would revolt me. It would disgust me. We do not look good in dresses. It's not that you're ugly people, okay? But we do not look good in dresses and makeup. Let me make this clear. There is a clear difference between men and women that God made. And when we start to mix, mix that, that is an abomination to the Lord. Now, the ones that are pushing this transgenderism are politicians and the news media. They want to make you believe that transgenderism is everywhere in our society. It is not, okay? Now, one place where it is a lot and where you will see a lot of issues with it is in schools because this world, because the devil hates women so much, he wants to seduce the most vulnerable among us to thinking that transgenderism is all right. There's a lot of pushback on this because, again, there's nothing more disgusting than seeing a guy trying to dress up like a woman, okay? There, there really is not. It is disgusting. And even people who are not saved know this. Okay. And again, let me tell you, I, you know, according, if you went by the news media and if you went by the government of our nation, you would think that transgenderism is just something that's exploding everywhere and we need to really just embrace it. Again, I have been in seven airports this week. Seven. And I do a lot of people watching. So I'm sitting in the airport watching a lot of people. And one thing that struck me, which did my heart good, is a lot of families flying. And also, to my knowledge, I did not see one man in a dress, which I thought was crazy. I would expect to see some. They're not that prevalent. The only place you're really going to see them is if you're in Hollywood, if you're in California, San Francisco or something like that. You know, yeah, there will be, you know, a crazy crackpot here and there wearing a dress. You know, there's probably one in every town. But it is not as prevalent as the world wants you to think it is. You know, in general, young girls grow up understanding that they are girls and young boys grow up understanding that they are boys. It is not until the educational system of our nation gets a hold of them that they cause confusion. 
Transgenderism is an abomination unto the Lord, and it is attack, an attack on women. Let me tell you why. I saw an article, which happened a couple of weeks ago or something, where Jill Biden, on whatever International Women's Day, gave an award to a fat guy named Ralph for Women's Day. An Argentina guy, dressed up like a woman, who was born as a man, got an award for being the best woman out there. Here, is, let me tell you, let me tell you ladies something. Here is what the world wants to tell you. The world wants to tell you that men can be women better than women can be women. That's what they want to tell you. There is a war out there against women and Satan is leading it. And he has at his back the dumbest, most naive generation of people that has ever been born who will look you in the face and tell you that our health and human secretary of the United States, the one in charge of health, the one who is a former pediatrician, they will tell you her name is Rachel. That is clearly a man. There's nothing she can do, by the way, to, to, he can do to make himself look like a woman and anybody be misunderstood. If you've never seen a picture of him, you know, empty stomach so that you don't throw up. Take a look at a picture of our health and human services, whatever cabinet member, whose name is Rachel Levine, who was not born that way. Rachel, Rachel Levine, our health secretary for the United States of America, is a father of two girls. How can it be a woman? Yet that is what the news media wants to tell you. The news media wants to tell you women that men can be women better than women can be women. That's what they want to tell you. Because they are celebrating all these transgendered athletes. You know, I've seen two transgendered athletes who won in women's competitions. And they are giants compared to the women who are standing next to them. And our world wants to tell you, oh, this is, just, this is, this is scientifically perfectly all right. How gullible do they think that we are? You know, I looked up the rules. There are rules for in college for women who transition to men and want to be athletes and for men who transition to women who want to be athletes. The rules for women who transition to men are this. They can play sports. I mean, have you ever heard of any woman, women transitioning to be a man and then joining the weightlifting team? They're not going to. You know why? Because they will never win. However, the rules for men transitioning to women are like, oh, testosterone level of this for two month, two years or whatever. Why? Because, brace yourselves, men are stronger than women. So when we compete in women's sports, even if we have long hair and a clean shaven face, we will win because we're stronger. That's just the way it is. Go with me to 1 Peter chapter 3. I mean, what does the Bible have to say about the fact that men are stronger than women? 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's just go to verse 7. Of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible reads, Likewise, ye husbands. So anytime, you know, because the world is out to tell you that the Bible is anti-women, the Bible is not anti-women. The Bible is always for women. Always. Oh, well, doesn't the Bible say that women should be subservient to their own husbands? Yes, to their own husbands. Okay, understand this, young ladies, women here. It doesn't mean you are subservient to men. You are to be subservient to your own husband, not somebody else's husband. Okay? And everywhere that that is said, there is another comment for men. In the same place. Likewise, men should do this. So women are to do this, but let's not forget, hey, men are to do this. So look at verse 7. 
Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. So have knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Understand that women are the weaker vessel. We as men are supposed to be, give honor to them as unto the weaker vessel. You know, a lot of people say, well, because you believe the Bible, you must be chauvinist. No, I believe that men are to treat women Better than we would treat ourselves because they are the weaker vessel. If you are married to a woman, she should be first before you. Does that sound fair? It is absolutely 100% fair because they are the weaker vessel. We are to give them honor. So how honorable is it for so many men today to just have children with women and then just let them leave them to take care of it? That, according to the world, is just fine. But that is another part of the devil's attack on women. There are so many women in this world that wear that single mom badge like a badge of courage, a badge of honor. Yet, deep down, if you say, you know, wouldn't you rather have a, guy, a, a man helping you out? I would say 99.9% .9 of them would say absolutely yes. Just looking at it. That's the reason, crime, the reason crime has exploded in our nation is in large part due to the number of single women raising young boys. I mean, come to, to, come to Gravel Hill Baptist to hear the truth. I, and why do I know this? Because I know young boys. I had two sons myself. And I know that they love their mother. And I also know that she could not make them mind unless she said those magic words that she told me when we got married, she was never going to say, but she wound up eating those words and saying them often. Those magic words are wait until your father gets home because my boys listen to me. They still do. I can keep them in line. They love their mother but it was very clear she could not. My youngest son once told his mother, I, you know, you can go ahead and punish me now before dad gets home. <laughs> because she he knew he got he and he, you know, he got a harsh punishment then. Because but he knew that her punishment was not nearly as bad as mine was going to be. Why then is the world just celebrating single moms when it is causing a lot of of the crime in the world because they cannot make their children mine. And why is it that the world seems to let dads these days have a pass? You know, you would think that if we were that concerned about women on Women's Day, there would be fewer single parent family you know, households in the nation run by women. But no, there are more and more every year. Because men are just, le and there's no stigma to them. There absolutely should be a stigma to men leaving women with babies. That is wrong. Go with me to, and this is my third point here, 2 Timothy, or rather 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Let's go ahead and read some, some, a part of the Bible that really seems to offend a lot of women. But let's understand that the war on women is waged by the devil and his children, not by God. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. The Bible reads, and this is Paul writing, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array, but which becometh women, professing godliness with good works. Then notice what he says here. This, this sometimes gets you know, women up in arms. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed in Eve. 
Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And then verse 15, this is what I want us to look at. Notwithstanding, but I wanted to read all of that because you're never going to hear that in like, uh, you know, Joel Olstein's church. <laughs> you know? So we need to hear all of the Bible. So we're going to hear it here. So verse 15, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. The Bible puts a high premium on women giving birth to children. The world does not. The world is all about birth control, all about abortion, all about not making women mothers. Oh, you think all we're good for is having babies? I say, what's the problem with that? We men can't do it. It is a special honor given to women to have children. That should be, and you know, if you go through the Bible, all the women in the Bible, the ones who were not able to have children, that was all they focused on, wanting to have children. They prayed for years to have children. Yet today, our society, in its war against women, says you can find your you know, calling elsewhere. The happiest women that I have ever seen in my life were mothers. They had, some of them had careers too. I'm not against women having careers. But the happiest women I have ever seen in my life were mothers because they know when they leave this earth, they can't take anything with them, but they can leave children behind. You know, women who are, I've seen pictures of, of like great grandparents with like four or five generations of women, you know, pictured with them, all smiling, all happy. Let me tell you, I don't see that in business women who are single. For the most part, they're miserable. They're always gossiping. They're always griping. I know a few from work who are single. No names, of course, or anything like that. But, you know, they're not happy people. But the, the women that I know at work that have children, they're, they're always happy. And they're always thinking about their children. You know, having children is a good thing for women. That is what the Bible says. Is that what our world says today? No. It will slow you down. It will hinder you in the workforce. It's not something you want to do. Look, the, our, again, the children of the devil are out to get women because the woman is what got the devil in trouble to begin with. And the woman is who gave birth to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this earth. The man who was fully man and fully God. That wouldn't have happened without a woman. And that is why the devil hates women. If you want true happiness as a woman, take a, a good, hard, honest, open-minded look at what the Bible says and compare it to what the world tells you today. And you will find that the Bible is pro-women all the time. And even look at other religions compared to the religion of Christianity is Islam anti-woman absolutely how about Mormonism according to Mormonism you are subservient to your husband not only now but also forever afterwards according to the Bible when it comes to Christianity there is no difference between men and women women are not in some subservient labor uh, you know layer like Islam and, and, and Mormonism and according to the Bible when we get to heaven, you were not married to that guy forever. There is no marriage in heaven because we are all the same. You see how Christianity is pro-women versus all these other things? And yet the devil wants to pull the wool over women's eyes. If you want the truth, look at the Bible. The truth will set you free. So happy Women's Month to all the women out there. And, and you know, look, the Bible is for women. The Bible has only good things to say about women, how women are to be treated in our society, what their roles are, and how they are supposed to be. Yeah, and it's very clear on the differences between men and women. It seems strange that so many men want to be women, but I don't see that many women wanting to be men. Men need to understand there's a clear difference, and we have responsibilities to treat women correctly. That is what the Bible says.
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for your word, for the truth, Lord, as we know that the devil is trying to muddle our society, trying to muddle